Local 4 News begins right now with a breaking news alert. And we begin with breaking news. A suspect leads police on a chase through Plymouth Township. You're looking at live pictures right now. Police are searching for the man. He took off from his car running in the area of five mile west of Beck Road. We're being told right now that man is wearing a gray beanie and a gray shirt. As of right now, it's unknown why he was running from police. Of course, stay with Local 4. We're going to bring you new information as we get it. Also breaking right now in Northville Township, evacuations underway after crews hit a gas line. Apartment buildings in the area of Northridge are being cleared out after construction crews hit a gas line there. We're expecting some new information soon. As soon as we get it, you will hear it here first. After some much needed showers, we are in for round two this afternoon. There are still 12,000 DTE customers without power. They're out of power from yesterday's storms. Andrew's in for Brandon right now. And Andrew, are we expecting more of the same later today? Well, Sandra, you mentioned round one from yesterday. Yes, additional rounds. <laughs> Emphasis on the word rounds. Notice it's plural. Coming today and tomorrow. We're in this wet pattern for a change that will last all the way through at least the middle part of the day on Friday. Right now, shower and thunderstorm activity mainly occurring west of the city. While over downtown Detroit, we still have hazy conditions. A few folks out there on the water. Yes, you can still take the boat out now. But you have to make it a quick one because by two, three o'clock, we'll have showers and storms sprouting up in different parts of the area, and it's hard to judge where geographically they'll be. That's how random it may be at first, but that's about two o'clock in the afternoon afterward. We already have 82 degrees and a marginal risk of strong to severe storms. Nothing appearing right now. There are no watches, nor are there any warnings, but we'll keep you updated on that. Right now, temperatures in the upper 70s and low 80s. Look how sticky it is with those dew points that are in the upper 60s and low 70s. We're watching for any thunderstorm development either just to our west, south and west or right on top of us later this afternoon. We'll talk more about this, how strong those storms will get and your forecast for tomorrow's storms and then your weekend forecast coming up. More breaking news now. We are learning Kwame Kilpatrick will not be returning to a Detroit courtroom after all. The former mayor had been scheduled to appear in federal court later this month to ask a judge to lower the amount he has to pay the city of Detroit. Both parties now think they can agree to a lower restitution without any hearing. So the hearing in Detroit has now been canceled. The former mayor is serving 28 years for public corruption. He has not been back to Detroit in four years. Also breaking right now, we're expecting to learn new information in connection with the shooting death of Wayne State University Police Sergeant Colin Rose. Rose, you might remember, was shot in the head while stopping a man on a bicycle in Detroit's Woodbridge neighborhood. It happened back in November. A news conference is expected today at 2 this afternoon, and you can watch that news conference live on clickondetroit.com. Also developing an underground cable failure believed to have caused several explosions last night in Greektown. One of those explosions sent a manhole cover 100 feet into the air and right onto the roof of an eight story building. Amazingly, nobody was hurt. Nick Monticelli is in Greektown with a closer look at the damage. Good afternoon. This is something that last night nobody really knew was going on, but the damage to the Athenaeum Hotel is considerable. Look at the way this explosion last night blew this outside door right off the hinges. The damage inside is about the same. And if you look around, it's not just the door. You can see that parts of the facade of the building are cracked. These loading doors were blown right off of the tracks. What happened last night was intense. It was boom. It was loud. In situations like these, panic can set in quickly, simply because of the unknown, as explosions could be heard all throughout Greektown. You don't know if it's like boom, like a boom, like a car hitting, or a boom, like something's blowing up. Blowing up underground. Manhole covers were shooting into the air. Witnesses say one landed on top of Fishbone's restaurant. I'm over here, um, and out of nowhere, we just heard boom. <laughs> As you can imagine, it was chaotic. Police and firefighters running, evacuating buildings, still not sure what was happening. A massive explosion. I mean, the, the, the building shook a little. And uh, so we ran to the window and we saw people running all over the place. Inside the Athenaeum Hotel, guests could hear, see, even smell what was happening. That hotel was evacuated and those inside Greektown Casino were told not to move. And then uh, a second explosion went off. 
and the manhole cover came off, and a lot of smoke and fire were coming out of the, out of the, <clears throat> out of the street. But just a few hours later, everything is calm again and back to normal. DTE crews figured out what happened. An underground high voltage cable failed, causing all of this. And despite all of this, nobody was hurt. But again, the Athenaeum Hotel took the majority, the brunt of the damage, basically all of the damage. Now, DTE says there are multiple transmission lines underneath of us right here. And just because the one failed doesn't mean the other two or three are going to. So the rest of Greektown still has power. They're still working to determine, though, exactly how that line fails. In Greektown, Nick Monticelli, Local 4. A quick update for you now to our breaking news we told you about at the top of the newscast. A suspect leads police on a chase through Plymouth Township. They're looking at live pictures right now where police have just taken that suspect into custody after he took off from his car running. This is in the area of Five Mile, just west of Beck Road. Right now, hundreds of family, friends, and firefighters are gathering to say goodbye to Kevin Ramsey. He's the veteran Detroit firefighter who died over the weekend after battling back-to-back -back fires. Sean Lay is live at the Cathedral of the Most Blessed Sacrament, and Sean, we know he leaves behind a big legacy to those who knew him. You are correct, Sandra. We just stepped outside. The funeral mass just starting for Kevin Ramsey. Such an outpouring of support and love inside and outside the cathedral here for one of Detroit Fire's most loved and popular members. Great is Detroit firefighter Martin Rucker filling the cathedral, the most blessed sacrament, with his incredible voice to honor his friend from Detroit Fire Squad 3, Kevin Ramsey. Family, friends, and firefighting brothers and sisters from all over Metro Detroit, around the country, and from Canada, one by one saluting the beloved firefighter today. After Ramsey fell victim to a heart attack after fighting two fires this past Saturday, Kevin Ramsey was only 50 years old. He was doing what he loved, and he's a true hero and a great loss for the city. The officer on duty working with Ramsey on what would be Kevin Ramsey's final day, sharing his thoughts. At his last fire, he was still telling a joke, making guys laugh at the bumper while we were loading line. Back here live, Mayor Duggan also speaking inside the church after he was through speaking with us, raising the possibility, Sandra, of a new program, Heart Health Checks for Detroit Firefighters. We'll be learning more about that this afternoon and have much more coming up later on Local 4 News at 5 o'clock. Back to you. All right, Sean, thank you. New at noon, three men charged in a bribery scheme in an effort to open a marijuana dispensary in Garden City. Mike Ali and Jalal Beydoun, all accused of bribing the mayor of Garden City, the police chief, and also three council members. They were trying to obtain an authorization to open that marijuana dispensary. The indictment also alleges the Beydouns bribed those three council members with $5,000 each. Additionally, the three conspired to place $150,000 into escrow to fund future bribes of officials as well. Investigators say a house fire that left one man dead was no accident. It happened off cruise north of Grand River on the city's west side. One woman who managed to get out told police someone threw something into the house and then took off. Firefighters pulled a 23-year-old man from the house. He died on the way to the hospital. No word on a suspect right now, but we are hoping to get more information sometime soon. Former Michigan State basketball star Keith Appling will spend one year behind bars without early release. Appling was sentenced this morning after taking a plea deal last month. He pled guilty to one count of carrying a concealed weapon and one count of attempting to resist and obstruct a police officer. The charges stem from an incident last August in Detroit, which was his third arrest in six months. Appling will also face five years probation. The doors of the new Cabela's in Chesterfield are now officially open. The fourth Cabela's store in Michigan opened to the public just a couple of hours ago. This is on Hall Road near the intersection of M59 and I-94. The first 500 customers got a gift card. The store is 90,000 square feet, and it's, of course, an outdoor sporting goods store, if you're not familiar with it. Still ahead, another ride malfunctions at a very popular fair. Find out what went wrong that left three people dangling in the air for nearly a half an hour. Plus, she was convicted in the suicide of her boyfriend. Coming up next, 
how many years this woman will now face in the case that could change laws all across the country. Under two hours from now, the woman found guilty of pressuring her boyfriend to kill himself will be sentenced. Michelle Carter could face 20 years in prison for involuntary manslaughter after she encouraged her boyfriend to kill himself in dozens of text messages back in 2014. Her boyfriend, Conrad Roy, was found dead of carbon monoxide poisoning in July of 2014. The sentencing is set for two this afternoon. Shocking video shows the moment when three people had to be rescued from a bungee ride in California. Witnesses say the ride malfunctioned. It left two people stuck in a bungee cage. A third man was stuck hanging upside down 30 feet in the air. The man was stuck hanging upside down for about 20 minutes before firefighters rescued him using an aerial ladder. Two others were lowered to the ground using a rope. Fortunately, the good news, no one was injured. An angry customer has a major meltdown at a fast food restaurant in Florida, and it's all caught on camera. Police actually had to get involved when two women started yelling at Chick-fil-A employees. One employee told officers that one of the suspects was complaining, trying to get refunds and trying to get free food. One suspect even picked up a table, a vase, and threw it across the restaurant, breaking it on the floor. They could be charged with criminal mischief. Well, we all know there are several big concerts and sporting events coming to Metro Detroit this summer. Still ahead at noon, a Help Me Hang consumer alert about the websites you need to be aware of and the legitimate sites to get great deals. Andrew? Sandra, good afternoon. Good afternoon, everyone. We already have a couple of showers that are popping up here on 4 Live Radar. You see them here in southern Oakland County, also just west of Pontiac. So how much more will they intensify? We'll talk about that for this afternoon's forecast. We'll talk about Friday and your weekend as well in just minutes. Summer has it is hot and steamy out there right now on this Thursday and things might get tricky this afternoon. Uh, everything that summer's about, Sandra, but the good and the bad. I mean, it's dry here in Detroit for now, but with all the steaminess outside, it does mean showers and thunderstorms. And even though we do need the rain, still dry by about a couple of inches here in Detroit for the season, it will be coming all at once, once again, just like yesterday. Here, take a look at 4 Live Radar. Already getting off to an early start, ladies and gentlemen. Let the games begin. Already got a couple of thunderstorms right here, at least a couple of lightning strikes around the the Holly and Clarkston area. Also down here just to the east of West Bloomfield and just to the east of Bloomfield, uh, Bloomfield Hills and Bloomfield Township. You can see that and also farther to our west out toward Chelsea. No lightning associated with this, but it has been steadily growing in size and I think these others will as well. You can almost see a line trying to form right here, cutting right across Lake St. Clair into southern Macomb County. So the Warren centerline area, if you're already seeing some billowing clouds, don't be surprised if a shower forms right on top of uh, Centerline, Frazier, Roseville between now and about one o'clock and the same thing down here down toward portions of Washtenaw County, including the Ann Arbor area as things are just starting to bubble and boil more and shout more showers and thunderstorms will pop off. In addition to that, reserved for tomorrow, we have a cold front off to our west, more organized storms near Dubuque that rolls through tomorrow. So another chance of showers and thunderstorms as we get into Friday morning. Let's talk about right now. Once again, though, you can see the clouds overhead here in downtown Detroit, but some sunshine making it down to earth as well, making us warm up quite a bit already 82 degrees. And I think we'll see highs top out around 85 or even a little bit higher before any rain forms. And when those showers form, just like yesterday, there is the threat. It's not guaranteed. There's no watch. There's no warning right now, but just keep in mind this may happen, may see some frequent lightning, may have some damaging wind once again, and we may experience some minor flooding, major flooding if you're caught in it on area roadways, even the possibility of small hail like yesterday, because we have that marginal risk of showers and storms becoming strong to severe 86 already for our friends in Ferndale, 80 already in uh, Dundee, 82 for our friends in Monroe. That's after temperatures that were in the 60s. Speaking of 60s, when you have dew points like this, 60s and low 70s, it feels like the tropics and it's just ripe for showers and storms to, to actually develop. And that's going to happen later this afternoon and continue to do so even through the dinner 
dinner hour. You can see that here on the computer models and they'll be popping up in various areas. We just talked about Southern uh, Macomb County, also out toward Washtenaw County, but later in the afternoon, other parts of Southeast Michigan will be affected as well. So we're looking at highs today around 84 to 86 degrees with more and more showers and thunderstorms developing. So if you have any errands to run, any activities that are outdoors, get them done now within the next couple of hours because after two o'clock, they really start forming rapidly. Then we'll see evening storms, but then they die down by midnight. More showers and thunderstorms with that cold front we talked about for Friday. And this will be mid morning and middle part of the day on Friday up until about 2 p.m. After that, Sandra, it gets sunny for late Friday afternoon, lots of sunshine on Saturday, highs in the 70s, and another chance of showers late Sunday and Monday. Back to you. The concert and event promotion industry brings in $28 billion into the U.S. annually. That's a lot of tickets and a lot of potential scams as well. This noon, our Hank Winchester has a few tips on how to protect yourself as you plan your next outing to that concert or sporting event. There are many legitimate websites out there like StubHub and Ticketmaster where you can score great seats to cool events. But there are other websites out there that are just trying to do one thing, rip you off. Beth Charbonneau paid $12,000 at a charity event for tickets to the Grammys, a star-studded weekend in Hollywood. It was all arranged by jazz musician Donald Ski Johnson. His foundation got half of the proceeds, but Beth says she never got her tickets. You keep telling yourself like, no, this isn't really happening. And you know, as an adult, you're thinking, oh yeah, it is. Summer event season is also summer scam season, the perfect time for thieves to take advantage of you. So if you're heading to a concert, a festival, or a sporting event, take precautions to make sure your tickets are the real deal. Fraud expert John Breo says scammers often target high demand events like big name concerts or championship games. There's a limited supply, and so people who think that they're getting a ticket may not stop and do their due diligence. Check refund policies because reputable websites will have specific guarantees and will show you how you can get your money back if the concert is canceled. Avoid using uh, street scalpers. If they give you a fake ticket, there's no way for you to get your money back. Beware of any deep discounts and pay with a debit or a credit card so you could dispute any transaction if it turns out to be a fake. We have more information about the websites that you should be looking out for. Also, the trusted websites you should be going to to buy tickets. We'll have all the information for you on the Help Me Hank page at clickondetroit.com. I'm Hank Winchester. Help Me Hank. Thank you, Hank. An Oregon doctor performs a groundbreaking eye surgery. Coming up next at noon, the unique animal that underwent the first of its kind procedure. While you're sleeping, big news can break. A missing two-year-old girl. You might have gotten that Amber Alert on your smartphone. That's why Detroit wakes up to Local 4 News and click on Detroit. This is a developing news situation. Local 4 News is on the scene. Live on Facebook. This chase just, you know, dizzying. Knife on the dash of the suspect's car. He came around that corner fast. For news you need to know. Kids okay. And this Amber Alert seems to be over. Credible and reliable here for you. 100.3. Finally, today at noon, an eye doctor in Oregon gives the gift of sight to a pretty unique patient. Oh, you said it, Sandra. You can take a look, everyone. It's not a person, not a human being, a 32-year-old flamingo. This is Catalina. She underwent cataract surgery, which posed a very special challenge due to the bird having really tiny eyes. Doctors say the operation was a success. Catalina will spend two weeks recovering before she can go back home to where she lives at a local safari park. Looks like she's more attached too, Very to her handle. Thank you so much for being with us today for Local 4 News at Noon. Have a great Thursday.